It's laid out a little different than my old one. And when I looked and I saw four, I thought I was in chapter four, but I'm in chapter three. And uh, I didn't know that until after this morning's uh, later service. But so, somebody said, hey, what chapter were you in? <laughs> and uh, so I made a boo-boo there, but that's okay. Still the same word, just a different number. Jeremiah chapter three. If you'll kind of try to find verse 19 there, that's where we're going to start. And the word says, I thought to myself, I would love to treat you as my own children. I wanted nothing more to give you than this beautiful land, the finest possession in the world. I look forward to calling for to your calling me father. And I wanted you to never turn from me. I'm going to stop right there for just a minute. We'll read the rest of that. And I gave him the title this morning for this sermon. I used the word equesh. And uh, I, when I sent it to Brother Kevin, he emailed me back and said, you want to try that again, Pastor? He said, I think you mistyped that. Something don't look right. I sent it to Brother David and he sent it back too. And uh, equesh is a Hebrew word for crooked. Now, would you agree with me that our world, you can look around and see a lot of corruption, can't you? You see a lot of crookedness. You see a lot of things that's just not right. And it's really hard to do anything about those things, isn't it? But when I was reading Jeremiah the other night, and I was reading through, and in a minute we'll be down to a verse that's going to talk about this. The Hebrew word, equish, literally means crooked or corrupted or perverted or messed up. Something's not right about it. And when he says, look, I, I thought to myself, I would love to treat you as my own children. This is Jeremiah quoting the Lord. It's in quotations. I wanted nothing more to give you this beautiful land, the finest possessions in the world, and I look forward to your calling me Father. I want you to think about those words just for a minute because this is literally God speaking to the children of Israel. This is literally what he's saying to them. And I truly believe this more that God wants to take care of us. And he wants us to, be, to have the finest possession in the world. He wants us to be uh, nothing more than, than calling him Father. And that's what he wants from us. He's the, in this, this passage, I wanted you to never turn from me. That's what he wanted. He wants you to never turn from him. Let me read this a little further. But you have been unfaithful to me, you people of Israel. Been unfaithful to me. I'm going to drop down to verse 21. Listen to this. Voices are heard high on the windswept mountains and weeping and pleading of Israel's people for they have chosen crooked paths and have forgotten the Lord, their God. That word crooked right there is the word ikwesh, I-Q-Q-E-S-H. It's a word we don't use. It's in the Hebrew language, and I love the Hebrew language. But it literally means crooked. It literally means messed up, twisted, perverted, not the way it was supposed to be. He's telling them, look, you have chosen a path that is not the path I had intended for you to be on. Simple as that. They have chosen crooked paths. They have chose paths that were their own and not God's. They have chose paths that's what they wanted and not necessarily what God wanted. Listen to what he says. My wayward children, says the Lord, come back to me and I will heal your land. My wayward children, come back and I will heal your hearts. I will heal you. I want you to think about those verses for just a minute. I want you to look at where the United States is. And I know you're going to agree with me this morning. It's not in the best position, is it? We're not, we're not a country that needs to be where it is with God, are we? And I, so I thought to myself, and I wondered back, okay, this is the children of Israel. This, this is God's chosen people. Where did they go wrong? Where did they mess up? What happened that was so bad that they got off and they forgot who God was? My wayward children, you've chosen the wrong path. You've chosen the crooked path, the quish of paths. You have went the way that you wanted to go and left me out of it and the more I thought about that the more I looked and I thought how did they ever get that bad how did they ever get to that spot how did they ever get to where it was so bad that they had chose themselves so long that they had forgotten God who had brought them through so much they had forgotten the God that loved them the God that wanted them to be his children the God that created everything how did they get so far away from God it took a little time didn't it it started a while back, I'm sure. I'm sure parents that had lost their way and they taught their children the, the same way they did. They did it the way they wanted to do it. They did it the way I wanted to do it. They did it the way they thought it ought to be done without consulting the Father. And over generations and generations and generations of Israelites, 
it finally got to the point where they knew about God, but they did not know God, and they forgot him. Every path we come to, they didn't have super highways. The Romans had a few roads that they had built, but they didn't have super highways or wide paths. They had narrow paths. Every time these paths crossed, they come to that intersection, and they had to choose which way they were going to go, much like our lives. We cross paths every single day. We have to choose what we're going to do. And sometimes we choose the path and say, huh, this looks good. I want to go this way. And we go that way without even consulting God about what we should be doing or where we should be going. See how quickly this could unfold, especially in our lives today, how quickly we could get away from God by choosing the wrong path. Now, the word crooked here literally means twisted, messed up, uphill, downhill, all around the corners. Not an easy path to walk. And he says, look, y'all have chosen crooked paths. And don't you notice the word chosen right there? It didn't say God put them on that path, did it? It said you chose it. You chose where you wanted to go. Are we, have we become so selfish? Have we got to that point where we're so selfish we do what we want to do? We know who God is. We know what God has done. But we still do what we want to do. Have we got that far that we have forgotten who God is and what he means? what he wants us to do that's the passage this morning we'll read a little bit further in a few moments but I want to talk about these paths uh, Jeremiah mentions it I think 20 something 23 or 24 times the word path or, or way is, is actually mentioned when it's talking about a beaten path a ground, a ground driven path uh, and these people who have chosen crooked paths they've taken the, the, the Hebrew word the equish path uh, that twisted messed up not ordinary Jeremiah was elaborating that people had taken less than godly paths. This was the children of Israel. They were not where they were supposed to be. Now, I'm a firm believer that all through the Old Testament, all through uh, the people of Israel, we learn from them. That's why we have a record of them. They made mistakes, didn't they? They went the wrong way. They chose the wrong path. They did things they shouldn't have done. And they never really seemed to learn from their mistakes. They never really seemed. They always turned back, but eventually they would turn back away. They got away from God because they did not learn from their mistakes. And I believe God gives us this lesson because so we can look at the children of Israel and say, let's learn from their mistakes. Let's not do what they did. All through their history, even when the parents started choosing the wrong paths and they taught their children and their children and their children and their children and all the way down, we find a whole group of Israelite people who do not know their God. And they are God's people. And I look at us today and I look at America and I say the same thing. It's the same thing unfolding. Are we going to learn from the mistakes the Israelites made? Are we going to, are we going to look at this and say, let's not do as our forefathers did. Let's find out who God really is. And turn back to God. You see, it says they chose that path. And that means we have a choice, doesn't it? We can keep going down the path we're on. We can keep traveling, doing the things we're doing. Or we can turn and stop. And, and when the paths intersect, we can stop. Okay, God, which path would you like me to take? God, which path is going to benefit you the most instead of benefiting me? We get, uh, we get a little greedy sometimes and selfish, don't we? We... Well, this path, you know, this path looks pretty good. It's going to take me up there, and I'm going to be able to do all kinds of things I want to do. Can't we? All the things I want to do. Or we can take this little old path over here. I don't know where it goes or what, what's going to happen out of it, but God, if you want me to take that path, I'll take it. See the difference in the choice right there? It's, it's we're, we're selfish, and we want what's best for us and not necessarily what's best for God. And I think that's where we've lost him. Because God says, look, I, if you will simply choose me, I'll give you more than you ever thought you could have. If you'll simply choose me, I'll give you more of life than you ever thought you would have. If you would simply trust me, and isn't that what it boils down to? Trusting God with our life. Putting the reins in his hands. Say, God, I want to go where you want me to. I want to do what you want me to do. It may not be the most elaborate. You may not ever make the most money. You may not have the best job. You may not have the best of anything. But you will have the best of God. And that is worth more than anything. Isn't it? More precious than gold or silver. Isn't that what we sing? The best of him. But yet we let ourselves get in the way, don't we? We get selfish. We put things there that shouldn't be there. The eyes. I want this and I want that. See, there's the equish path, the crooked path, and there's another Hebrew word I want you to learn this morning. It's called yashar. And yashar means straight. The shortest distance between two points. Straight line. Learn that in high school, don't you? Maybe in grade school. Maybe in elementary school now. Straight line. 
Can you imagine what it's like to walk with God in a straight line? You don't have to worry about the curves or the heels. All you've got to worry about is one right there with you walking. Now, I don't think our lives will possibly ever be that close because we'll make mistakes. We're not perfect. We'll mess up, won't we? No, we're good at messing up because of ourselves. We let ourselves get in the way. The great news is what God says, look, if you will turn back to me, if you will get on the right path, he said, I'll heal your, your wayward heart. I'll heal it. I'll take it. I'll forgive you. I'll wrap my arms around you. I will hold you. I will walk with you. I will be with there with you daily. Daily. If you'll simply give me your heart. Because we're all wayward, aren't we? we well, the Bible says we're all like sheep. We've gone astray. We've all got lost. Hey, we went to my wife's class reunion yesterday. Had a great time. We got home. And we bought this really neat thing. It's called an invisible fence. Anybody ever seen one of those? Anybody ever been shocked by one of those? <laughs> I didn't get shocked, but we, when we set it up, it's really cool. You don't have to bury a wire. You just plug it in, set it in the house. You've got 180 feet all the way around it. Now, if he gets outside that 180 feet, guess what happens? It lets him know it. I don't even need to get one of these for church. I don't know how much those collars are. But uh, so we come home yesterday, and guess what? No dog. He's gone. And when I set this thing up, I'm going to tell you, it nailed him the first time. And I thought he'll never leave the garage, okay? He was gone. He somehow got across the fence. He somehow took the shock that that gave him, 30 seconds of like being tased. Can you imagine? And he got away from it. Well, once he got on the other side, he couldn't get back because it was going to shock him again. He wouldn't come back across it. Long story short, he come home. We unplugged it. He come back across it. We found him. And uh, but we were a little upset that he was gone. But I want you to think about this for a minute. He endured the torture of that shock to get to the other side of it. Y'all, we mess up, don't we? And sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it hurts bad. But we can live through it. God says, look, turn to me. Get on the right path. Turn to me, and I'll forgive you. See, he's, he's, he's big enough to do that. We have a hard time forgiving people, don't we? We, don't, we like to hold grudges. That's, that's the fleshly side of us. God is not like that. And that's not a free ticket to go and do as you please. But what it is, is a choice to say, God, I want to be on your path, not on mine. God, I want to walk where you want me to walk and do what you want me to do. And I know you're going to let me enjoy life. I know you're going to bless me for doing it. I know I'm going to have so much fun being with you, more than I can ever imagine if I choose to. This whole world entices us, doesn't it? He gets us kind of caught up in what we're doing and what looks good and what we think we need to be doing. It drags us away from him instead of closer. But it's a choice. If you choose the right path, and God wants to help you do just that. He wants to help you choose the path to take. Now, Jeremiah points out that the people had left, left the path of the Lord, that they were on their own paths, no longer following God's plan. They were, they were following their own. And they're no, no longer putting their trust in God, but they were following themselves and they trusted in themselves and he said because they did this they have forgotten the Lord their God now I believe Israel the Israelites they knew who God was I believe they knew that God was real they the stories they'd heard from their childhood about everything that had happened up until this point all the things that they talked about God that the temples were there the problem is they knew about him but they had no faith in him they were putting their faith in themselves. And this is where we mess up, guys. This is where we, where we falter. When we get to the point where we think, I can do this on my own. Hey, I'm going to tell you, life is hard. Some, some of you think, well, life's pretty easy. It's, it's, it's not too bad. Life is hard. There's choices you have to make that are hard choices. There's things you have to do that are hard decisions. There's hurt in life. It's, it's just the way it is. I can't imagine anybody going through life without God simply because he is there for you. And he even says that. He says, look, you who are heavy laden, come to me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. Y'all, we carry burdens, don't we? And stuff just weighs us down. It tears us up. It just, it gets us in a place where we can't even be effective in anything because we put too much of ourselves into everything that we do. And God says, look, just add a little bit of me to it. Put me first. Let me help you. As simple as that. 
This is not overly complicated. It's not something you have to be a scholar to understand. What he says is, look, I love you. I want you to call me Father. I want to give you what's best. Would you just turn to me instead of to yourself? So the Israelites get a good dose of this. Jeremiah tells them somebody had to step up. Somebody had to say it. I think they knew it. Just somebody had to say it. Listen to what they say. After verse 22, he says, you're my, my wayward children. He said, come and I'll heal your, your wayward hearts. He says, yes, we're coming. The people reply. This is what they said. Jeremiah told them, yes, we're coming. For you are the Lord our God. He says, our worship of idols on the hills and our religious things that happen on the mountains are a delusion. And we know who the king of delusion is, right? Only in the Lord our God will Israel ever find salvation. Listen to what they say. From childhood, our ancestors worked for their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters, was squandered in a delusion. How many of y'all would agree with me that life is too busy? That we have no time for anything, do we? And most of the time when we do get time, we're so tired, all we want to do is sleep. We just want to lay down, don't we? Relax and rest. A lot of us probably do that this afternoon because it's been a long week, right? I know my wife told me this morning, she said, I got a job for you this afternoon. And I went, oh. why? Because we're tired. We work so much and we do so much for everybody else. We never take time for God and ourselves, do we? I know I've seen on Facebook and a lot of people told me they're going, going on vacation, going to the beach, going to Florida, get, just to get away for a few days and praise you for doing it. Get away from the rat race. Get away from the things that slow you down. Did you hear what was said in this verse? He says, as everything our ancestors worked for, their flocks, their herds, their sons, and their daughters was squandered on a delusion. You know what I think Jeremiah is saying? All through their history, all through their, the, the things they did, their everyday chores, the everything they, they, things that they did, everything that happened up until this point, they bought into a lie. They did not take the time in their lives to put God in perspective. They didn't take the time out to to love on their families, to love on the things around them. They did what they had to do and just kept, got caught in that routine and did it and over and over and over again. No, I don't want church to be a routine. That's why we change things up a lot. I don't want your lives to be a routine. Change things up. Do something different. Stop at a different gas station tomorrow. Come on. I mean, we get into habits, and sometimes they're not good habits. Sometimes they pull you away from the things that God wants you to, to have. Be free of the rat race in this world and put God in perspective. Put him where he needs to be and get on his path. Is that going to change your life completely? Probably not, but it's going to make a change in your life. Because for maybe for the first time in a long time, you're going to be somewhere that you're uncomfortable. You may be right smack dab in the middle of God's plan, and you may not like it because God has a plan for you. You may have to do something you absolutely don't want to do, but God needs you to. It's hard. It's not easy. Nobody ever said it would be easy. But if God's in it, you can do it. If he's in it, he's already equipped you. You've got to put your faith and trust in him. You've got to say, God, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But with you, I know I can. Luke 137, nothing's impossible with God. Live by that verse. Nothing is impossible. Whatever he puts before you, he's already equipped you for it. If you will trust him. If you will believe in him and say, God, I know I can do this because you've already said I could. Because I believe in you and I have faith in you and I trust in you. When's the last time you said to God that? Instead of looking at it and going, oh my word, what am I ever going to do? We have become selfish creatures and we have left God out of our lives. Let's not forget who God is. See, the Israelites did. I'll read you some more of this. It says, let us lie down in shame and cover ourselves with dishonor, for we and our ancestors have sinned against the Lord our, our God. Repentance. Simple as that, repentance. You, they realized where they were. They realized what was going on. They realized what was happening in their life. And they realized they had to do something because they had sinned against God. They had turned their back. They had forgotten. It says, from our childhood to this day, we have never obeyed him. They realized maybe just for the very first time, God, wait, this is real, and you're real, and what have we done? We've messed up. It's nobody's fault but our own. I chose this. See, I have, a, I have just an inkling feeling there's going to be a lot of people stand before the judgment seat of God and say, well, so-and-so never told me. 
It ain't so-and-so's fault. Remember that verse? It says, for they have chosen their crooked paths. They chose it for themselves. You are big enough to make a decision and choose for yourself who today you will serve. It's not up to anybody else. It's nobody else's fault. It's yours. He give it to you. It's your choice which path you will be on. Yes, we're coming, the people reply. For you are the Lord our God. What's it going to take for you to see it? Tragedy? Death? God himself standing before you face to face? See, the problem is, it's real easy to come to church. The problem is, it's real easy to sing the nice praise songs we sing. It's really easy to sit through a sermon and say, yeah, you know, he's probably right. And go out that door and never acknowledge who God is. It's too easy. You know, I've seen the mountains in the fall, right, and all the colors. Well, most of you have. You've seen the mountains in the spring when they're blooming. It's beautiful. I've seen the flowers, the trees. God's canvas. It's amazing, isn't it? How can you not acknowledge a living God? How can you say all this just happened? See, God designed every bit of that. I'm going to tell you something else. He designed you. He made you who you are for a purpose. Right here we find a purpose for you to acknowledge who he is. Isn't that what he wants? Hmm? Nothing more for us to call him Father. My Father that art in heaven. Nothing more to say than you are my God. You are who you say you are. You are Yahweh. You are the rose of Sharon. You are the lily of the valley. The I am. You are. See, I think the people of Israel, over generations, back and forth, show us that we'll all fall away if we allow ourselves to. We simply choose not to. We simply make a personal choice that I am going to follow my God. Now, we get so caught up in ourselves that a lot of times we forget the right path. We, we've gotten so far away from the truth that not only as a country, but as individuals sometimes. And we need to get that right. We need to get on that right path. We need to decide for ourselves which way I'm going to go. Not for what my granddad thought or my great-granddad or my mom or dad, but which way I need to go. And we need to remember the God that we serve. Our God's a mighty God. We need to be uh, reacquainted with God once again. We need to be where he wants us to be. He says, come back to me and I will heal your wayward heart. That verse says it all, doesn't it? It says everything. That's all we need. Come back to him. For you are the Lord. There's paths that intersect. And we have to choose our way or his way. We have to get on the right path. I told the group this morning when I was 16, I had a, I had a vet. Anybody ever seen a vet? It wasn't a Corvette, it was a Chevette. <laughs> and we had to shove it in and out most time to get it started. But uh, it was a little blue car, a little two-door car. It was my first car, and I was probably about 16 years and two months old. I've been driving since I was eight, so it was nothing to me. I, my granddad taught me to drive very early age because he didn't like to drive, and I'd drive into the store and back. So, I mean, I had the phone book sitting up so I could see over the dash, all right? And uh, I thought one day, I, I remember there's a highway called Buffalo Road, and I thought one day I had a friend that lived out there, and I was going to his house, and I thought, I'm going to see what this thing will do. It's a little four-speed, right? A little four-cylinder. So I wind it up, and I'm going out the highway, and I get it about 70, and that's, of course, wide open for that little car. And, uh, you know, on the interstate, it's just you put a gear and just hold it on the floor. But that was as fast as it would go. It was the fastest I'd ever drove by myself in a car. And I topped the hill, and there sat a state trooper. And his name is Bill Ray. <laughs> and he still is a state trooper to this day. And he, of course, pulled me over, and I turned off down another road, and he followed me down there. And, when he got to the car and asked me for my license, I was crying. He said, why are you crying? You're just speeding. I said, my daddy's going to kill me. I wasn't sad that I was breaking the law. I was sad about the consequences. And I told that story for this reason. You know, sometimes we don't get upset over the sin. We get upset over the consequences when we need to be upset over the sin. 
We need to be upset that we have sinned against our God. We need to be upset that it's not what he wanted for us. That's not what he had intended. We need to be upset that this is not God's plan for me. But we get more upset over the consequence. See how we're selfish? We get more upset over what's going to happen to us because what we did it instead of what we did. God has a better plan for you. If you will let him work in your life, if you will choose his path, if you will say for yourself, this is who I'm going to choose to, to be with today. This is who I'm going to choose to worship. This is my God. But you have to choose. I can't choose for you. Nobody else can either. It's all about you and him. If you will simply just choose him. He will give you life beyond what you could ever imagine. It might not be easy. It's not going to be perfect. But he will give it to you if you'll let it. Would you guys pray with me this morning? Because a lot of times in life we get caught up in other circumstances and other things. There's a lot of times that we carry burdens that we don't need to carry. And Father, this morning I know that uh, this altar was built of just carpet and wood. But it's a place where we can get on our knees before you and cry out to you. It's a place where we can realize I'm on the wrong path and I need to, be, I need to change that. I need to turn around. I need to get closer to you. I need to choose you instead of me. Oh God, let us choose you. I don't know where and when we fail so much that we become so selfish. Maybe it was this, this world that teaches us it's, it's all about us, but it's not. It's all about you. And it's not about me this morning or anything I said. It's about you and your word. And what, it's about what the Israelites had to decide that, that day who they would choose when they realized they were so far away from God they needed to turn and go toward him. Would you help us to do that today? In the name of our Savior, would you help us do that? name of Jesus would you help us draw unto thee would you put us where we need to be would you let us work and, and serve for you with a smile would you let us repent would you give us the heart to do that God we need you now worse than ever so he's asking Jesus name amen I'm going to ask you to stand if you would and we're going to sing this morning and I'm going to ask you to do this. Would you surrender to him? Would you turn everything over to God and just trust him? Would you make him number one in your life? It's time. As we sing, would you come? He's waiting on you. You follow him?
always say because uh, we may not be up playing the song or let me have an altar call if the invitation's over. I believe God's invitation's always open. I don't believe he ever stops calling. And just because you may not have had the courage or the strength or just maybe just didn't feel like it was the right time, that doesn't mean that before you get out those doors, you can't grab my arm or grab somebody and say, hey, I need to pray. I got something going on or I've got somebody in my family. I've got something in my life that I need to work out. Will you pray with me? Because I will. Anybody would. Just ask. But you have to make that choice. You have to choose to do that. Because it's between you and him. It's not between us and them and him. It's yours. He's given you that. He's given you your own soul, your own spirit, your own breath. Because he loves you. And he wants what's best for you. And he wants you to call him Father. That's what Jeremiah said right there. All right? I want to ask you if you would to be seated for just a moment. I'd like to ask our ushers to come forward this morning. Brother Liam, would you like to bless the offering this morning?